Good afternoon. It's once again on Friday, 5.30 in the p.m. And this is your host, Congressman Danny K. Kenyatta Davis, here listening to you, the people. Obviously, I've had a very exciting week because this was the week of the Democratic National Convention which takes place every four years in terms of this convention. And of course the purpose of it was to nominate a candidate for President of the United States of America. It was quite a process, quite a spectacle, and it involved all of the things that one would expect to be involved. Uh, Lots of people attended. There were lots of other people who would like to have gone, but in many instances, in many ways, it was also quite costly and expensive. Frederick Douglass said it and said it well, that one thing he knew in this world is that you may not get everything that you pay for, but you most certainly will pay for everything that you get, and if you don't pay one way, you'll pay another one. And so people who wanted to go, if they normally wouldn't have the money to pay, in some instances, neighbors assisted them. Uh, Some people, their churches took up offerings for them. In some instances, their group, fraternity, sorority, or other people took up collections so that they'd be able to pay the hotel bills and have a place to stay. Some places it was, you know, as high as $900 a room a night. Others was 600. The place I stayed, it was 619. Which just simply means that you have to plan and make preparation for all of these things. But for me, it was quite worth it. I had a tremendous week. I learned a great deal. I had a great deal reinforced. And I and my wife both went. She has become quite the activist herself in terms of being engaged and involved. And um, that's a good thing. But let me go to the phone and get this first caller in. And then I'll be right back with some analysis of what I think took place. And Carla, are you there? Good afternoon, uh, Dr. Davis, U.S. Representative of the 7th District. I have to ask you this question, okay? All I've right. I've been sitting back and looking in terms of politics, what's going on in terms of the presidential race, and I just wonder why the other Republicans did not really attack Donald Trump. Because... Because they didn't, he's the nominee. I don't think he expected to be the nominee. Because every time he opened up his mouth, he shoot himself in the foot. And well, I- let me just say this in terms of your question. Because different people, I heard some news analysts suggest that all the Democrats did was attack Donald Trump. <laughs> that that's all <laughs> the convention ended up being about. I want to say one thing, all right, in terms of um, um, Hillary Clinton. She did put a plan brought forth, all right? She did say what she would do and how she would go about doing a lot of different things. But Donald Trump, only thing I have heard him say, believe me, it's going to happen. And he didn't give no detail, and I can't believe people taking him serious. He have not told us his plan at all. Are you saying you don't think people are taking Donald Trump serious? I don't think he took himself serious and somehow he wind up being a nominee. I don't think people took him serious, but they're taking him serious now, though. Well, I guess you can look at things in many different ways. One person will look at a glass of water and it may be half filled and they'll say it's half filled. Somebody else will say It's half empty. I am hearing people suggest 
that Donald Trump is being very sophisticated in terms of his approach to campaigning and that by saying these outlandish things or things that we call outlandish that he always manages to get the attention of mass media therefore they communicate it freely and without any particular cost to him and so some folks seem to think that he's doing a brilliant job of campaigning so you know what <laughs> I, I just cannot believe this man because the president that's a serious job and you look at his character all right like uh like hillary clinton said that last night you can upset i mean he can get upset and, and he gonna be tweeting and we're gonna trust a man with all those nuclear weapon codes I, I, I couldn't trust him I just couldn't trust him because sometimes how a person act the way they talk and their behavior says so much about him in a lot of different ways he have not been acting like how you put it uh, like a president well let me ask you this because what is it that you want a president to be and all, a president okay, to do. His, I'm sorry. The things that come out of his mouth is very important because if you don't watch what come out of his mouth, now stop it by wrong. The things that come out of his mouth, if he wanted to be in president, it could start World War Three. Now, if I'm wrong, stop me dead in my tracks. Well, there are people who would agree with you that his rhetoric is inflammatory and rather than promoting peace, it would appear to promote war. But then there are other people who see it a different way. I mean, who say that he is talking about, about protecting the interests of the United States of America. I got you there. Now, how is he going to protect the interests of America? I'm going to give somebody else a chance. NATO is very, very important. Now, he's talking about not coming to aid of other people that's a member of uh, NATO. That's, that's crazy. That's like shooting yourself in the foot. And that was NATO was, uh, uh, was created, you know, in terms of countries that may need help. And even though America is somewhat like uh, uh, like the uh, policemen around the world, and they got to pay their fair share in terms of um, services, whether they do or not, whatever. And the things that come out of this man's mouth is crazy. It can it could cause World War Three. All right. Well, let me agree that I'm a supporter of the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. I do agree that it would be helpful if some of the other partners would pay a little bit more yeah. of the cost. But at any rate, I support it. I think it's valuable. I agree with its purpose. I thank you so much. And let me take another call. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Caller, are you there? Uh, yes, Congressman. It's a great day to be on God's green earth today. And it's a nice no day. Uh, a nice little part, but you know what? Let me tell you something. Um, we live in the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. I agree with there's that. There's some things that you can say and what now. I don't even like to mention that person, but the person from the Republican side, he says a lot of things that people, certain people wants to hear. Certain people want to have a platform to say things. I think it's messing up, stirring up the pot, but this is what this world is about. But again, he tells, you hear him speaking what he's going to do, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to change. Well, he also got to remember, he has to have uh, the go through the Senate and the Congress. He can't just tell people what to do and when to do. He would need one of the most intelligent cabinets around to try to keep his erratic self down. That's the only way that could work. But again, you know, uh, don't start a civil war because that's the only thing that I could see a lot of people 
you know, arguing on both sides about different people's beliefs. Now, the main concern is Bernie Sanders. Uh, our nominee for the Democratic uh, president is one of the most wonderful people that I know. I mean, so far, that's who I like to have. Now, she's a very intelligent person. She listens to a lot of people. Now, I know Bernie, Ka Bernie Sanders will be nominated to a cabinet post, some kind of form, fashion, and way. Now, if I, he wants want that, to, you, we, we, to, I'm not I'll sure. Be able to say things of this nature. Let me ask. Let me let me say this. Different people have different reasons. And Senator Sanders may rather be in a position to keep projecting the thoughts and ideas that he wants to. And you can do that much better if you are your own boss as opposed to having somebody else be the boss and kind of determining how far you can go with things without it creating controversy. So right. I'd like to see Bernie stay where he's at. Well, like I say, you know, it's, it's either yin or yang. I mean, he got his followers now. A lot of people really didn't know too much about the gentleman. But he's here. He's, his voices, his opinions are here with a lot of people. So I don't know. It's always sometimes to keep people close to you because it could really help you out down the road. And then on top of not help you down the road, you would be in a position to help him down the road. And it might be a wonderful thing. I'm not too sure. Like I said, I'm not the sharpest pencil in the drawer, but I can write a little. <laughs> Listen, let me get out the air so I hear your response and again. Thanks for taking the call. Thank you so very much. You know, the good thing about our country is that the United States of America, we have the freedom to push and project almost anything that we want to. And I think many people are kind of excited right now because as I indicated when I spoke at the convention's uh, Illinois delegation meeting the other day, is this country has been in existence now for 240 years. There is the idea that we could put together a more perfect union. I don't think there's anybody who would suggest that we have reached the level of perfection that we have the possibility of reaching. But I can tell you in terms of diversification of representation, I have not seen any group, any organization that I would say made more of an effort to display the diversification of America than what Democrats did in Philadelphia. I saw so many people on the stage speaking and doing things that I personally know, that, that I personally have had involvement with. All the way from Donna Brazile, who ended up being the general chairperson, Marcia Fudge, who is one of my colleagues, was the facilitating operating. There were a number of different type clergymen who opened sessions with prayer and whatever it is that they wanted to say to invoke the presence of a deity. The speakers were mixed every kind of individual that I could think of. So I give the Democrats, and I don't you know, I used to teach courses at colleges, and, you know, I didn't always give a lot of A's, but I would have to give the Democrats something close to an A in terms of the way 
they pushed and rolled out this week of showing the American people what they think of things. Let me make a couple of announcements before I take another call. Of course, we have coming up Chicago State University Day on August the 7th, where we're asking every clergyman that we know if he or she would talk about education, not to necessarily divert what their message for the day was going to be, but just include education in it. You know, the Bible says that my people perish for lack of knowledge. And of course, my daddy used to say, the more one learn, the more they realize how little they know. And we're asking every clergyman who stands in front of a congregation to just mention to it that education plays a vital role. If you are indeed a Christian and you can't read the Bible, or you can't understand some of what is being taught, then you miss opportunities. And then as a part of that, make sure that students, or individuals who would be students, know that Chicago State University is a good place that they can go to school, that they don't have to go away to Harvard, or Howard, or Yale, or Princeton, or the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, or Alcorn University, or Texas Southern University, or Benedict. They don't have to go any place. They can go right to 95th Street and enroll at Chicago State. And if they think they can't get there, the City Colleges of Chicago would be just a good place to start. But get some kind of higher education. Education, education, education. Education makes a person more attuned to the environment of which they are a part. So that's my announcement. Naturally, we ask people, we have a lot of fun during the summertime. We have our annual back to school picnic and parade which is going to be Saturday, August the 27th. And hey, everybody is welcome to be a part. Bring the kids out. We promote back to school, back to school. School day, school day, dear old golden rule day. Reading and writing and arithmetic taught to the tune of a hickory stick. You was my gal in Calico and I was your handsome barefoot boy. Yeah, up in the morning, out to school, the teacher's teaching the golden rule. Reading and writing and arithmetic, taught to the tune of a hickory stick. All those kind of things, it just makes you more available to do things, to know things, and to help others. So let's promote education. I'm going to be promoting it all the rest of the summer. And of course, I always, last summer, I did 17 town hall meetings during the month of August. I am not going to do 17 this year, but I am going to do a number. And I've got three already on the planning board one in Broadview, Illinois, one in Forest Park, and one in River Forest. All of those are suburban communities that I represent. And of course, anybody who want to know about it can give us a call. Our number is 312-738-1060, and we are eager to entertain your call. And you can give us a call right now, if you would, and let us know what's on your mind. It's hard for people not to talk politics at this point because politics is so vital 
and apart. I don't talk partisan politics on this show in terms of trying to tell people what they ought to do and where they ought to go and what they ought to vote for and all of that. This is a public interest discussion. Caller, are you there? Hello? Yes, go right ahead. Good evening, Congressman. I have a quick question. Why at the Democratic Convention was there any American flags on the stage the first night? And I have a comment which which will cure the immigration problem. That is, they had to go to, go to the service for three years so they could learn how to speak English with the GED. Okay, so, and then they'll be able to bring their mother, father, and, and wife and kids. If they sign up for four or five years, then they can bring up everybody. That's the message that they want to bring here or any other country. Only, you know, only because you're a veteran, I'm a veteran. We were not only proud, but we were full of pride that we served our country. And it hurts me that other people don't want to go into the service or people or people will start telling them, no, you ain't got to go. You ain't. Why? I did. You did. Am I right? Well, we have options in our country. And individuals can pretty much chart their own course of action. Uh, we don't really require that anybody go into the military. People who go now do so voluntarily. Uh, the military right now is a source of employment and a source of opportunity for many young people, especially who are trying to determine which way to go with their lives. You can join the military and get college education and train in free. Uh, of course, you may end up being in hazardous situations, but you may not. Individual freedom, but having collective spirit and collective will, I think is what democracy is all about. And that is you have the freedom to accept or the freedom to reject. You have the ability to do, and, and so I think everything becomes as we make it, that, 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 that we all have a role that we can play in determining what goes on in our country. You may not always get your way but you certainly can get the opportunity to be heard and to reflect and project your position and see how many other people you can get to agree with it and to it. Let me try and take this caller so that we can finish up uh, without them holding. Caller, are you there? I'll be real quick. Since we're comparing uh, the Democratic with the Republican convention, and I have a question, okay? Now, at the Republican convention, compared to the Democratic convention, at, uh, they did at the Democratic convention send out their condolences to the police officers that were slain, and the mothers and fathers who have lost their uh, children due to uh, police brutality. Now, why did the Republican at their convention did that as well? Well, you know, we can't answer for other people except to say that had they wanted to do that, they could have. There was nothing... It showed class and it showed that they had some empathy at the Democratic Convention compared to the Republican Convention. And All I'm right, we got only about 20 seconds, so let me thank you for calling. Let me thank all of our viewers. Thank all of us for listening. But let's make sure we know that August the 7th is Chicago State University Day 
in the 7th Congressional District. And let's keep education at the forefront, especially on the minds of our children. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week.